that our opportunity was there to just simply adore Him. Uh, as far as our physical, our verbal communication, uh, like in the first meetings, he said, I have always been helping you spiritually. And through love, you will come to see me as I really am. And when he told us that, we couldn't imagine anything more wonderful than uh, Baba as he was there before us, so beautiful and so radiant and so lovely. But his spiritual being, his, as he really is in his infinite state, is something that everyone is looking forward to uh, realizing, to experiencing. Because through the years, he impressed upon us time and again that he was not the physical body, beautiful and wonderful though it was, and that we should learn to be with him in the spirit and uh, find him within. And this goes on, even after he has dropped his physical body through the transitional period. Um, we find that Baba is still very much with us, as strongly in of making new people feel quite at home around him. And he had a great sense of humor. In India, for example, in 1954, he even had us Western men playing marbles with him. And he was up to little pranks, like uh, oftentimes when he offer his hand to shake hands with a person when they would reach out to grasp it he would make believe drop his hand and they would uh, be a little bit uh, uh, shaken by that and realize that this was something very funny and with children he had his ways with them of, of uh, attracting them and making them feel immediately quite at home with him but his love was something that was for everyone like when we were there with him in India in 1954 and at other times, he would tell us to absorb him as much as we possibly could and to tell the folks at home what happened, everything, so that they would feel that they too were there, that they could feel what he was giving to us. He wanted everyone to feel his love. And this goes on. He wanted this love to be spread through those who contacted him throughout the world. The knowingness that comes uh, without the use of the mind is suddenly you, you know things even without thinking and the ESP uh, begins to work. We discovered that especially in 1952 that we could, uh, uh, the whole family of five of us, we, we could almost read each other's mind and I could even tell what Baba was going to uh, say by, uh, before he even got through gesturing uh, using an alphabet board and at one time he proved this out I, uh, was a, he was about to gesture something I said oh I know what you're going to say Baba and he just put up his hand as if to say alright let me say it so he said it and it was a long involved sentence and I got a word for word and th which demonstrated that uh, uh, this uh, ESP but it's more than that because when you're in this uh, love, there's a oneness, and in this oneness, there's this knowingness, and, and uh, uh, you're at one, uh, and you know things, and can uh, you don't need to uh, use the mind. Who is an individual of significance, of awareness. We always found around Baba that something within us seemed to dissolve, mm -hmm. to dissolve, and we began to float free, and the first thing you know, we were actually swimming beautifully in the ocean of his love and of, of freedom at an inner level was unlocked uh, such as we could never experience ordinarily and although we would regain some of our old crystallizations when we would leave him some measure of what Baba had done within us would remain and continue Oh, well, it takes place in 1952 in New York when Baba was interviewing people in Mrs. Deuce's apartment. And at the close of one of the days, I think it was perhaps the last day, uh, Baba had everyone who was remaining there in the vicinity to see him come into the main uh, uh, waiting room. It was a very large hall. And we were, had been on the premises all day, and so we, of course, came into the room, and there were quite a, it was quite a gathering. And Baba was seated in all in splendor before everyone and uh, he was talking and saying different things 
most of which I've forgotten except one statement in particular. And while he was talking, I, well, gesturing, talking, um, I was thinking all this time that I'm in front of Baba, I should be loving him and feeling love toward him, but I'm not. And what's the matter with me? And then I thought, well, but I'm adoring Baba. And I thought, that's kind of strange to be adoring Baba. I had never heard of adoring someone. And I was just simply, absolutely adoring Baba. Completely. And then a few minutes later, Baba pops up, I'm adorable. (laughs) (laughs) As he really was, it is. Uh, My experiences with Baba was the last Mass Darshan day in Ahmednagar, India, in 1954. And that day, some 60 to 70,000 people from all walks of life came to see Baba. And they were, they came by foot, by bicycle, by bullet cart, and even by elephant to get there. And they were coming and going all day long. And when Baba came, he strode onto the platform looking divinely beautiful and very powerful. And he went to the edge of the platform and prostrated himself in front of the entire assemblage. And when he got up, he motioned uh, to his alphabet board, saying, in order to save you the trouble of bowing down to me, I bow down to you. And then he walked down among the people and sat down among first the men and then went over and sat down among the women and in a very, very friendly way, and then came back up onto the platform and motioned on his alphabet board, in order that you will feel and know that I am one with you and one of you, I have come down to sit with you. And then the program continued through the day, Baba giving darshan and prasad, and these thousands filing past Baba. It was a day of at least to me, unparalleled uh, expression. Well, since Baba has dropped his physical body, uh, a great many people have been wondering about their inner contact with him and uh, whether it is possible to have the strong, vital, alive, vibrant inner contact with him, the same as before. And uh, many of us have found that this is really so and that it can happen almost anywhere, I suppose, anywhere you are, because Baba is actually everywhere. But some have had beautiful, intimate inner experiences with Baba in India. For example, Lip has had a nice one. This is to say that it happened to me in India, but I agree with that, that it can happen to anyone who is ready at any time and at any place, so that it doesn't mean you have to be in India in order to have an experience. And uh, this happened to me in 1969 at Baba's tomb. And I understand that many people had various experiences at one place or another in India, and so this is only particular to me. Uh, I didn't really know what to expect when I went to visit Baba at the tomb. And And as I was outside of the tomb, I felt the utmost reverence and that anyone that I could ever imagine that was possible. But then after I entered in, and there were others in the tomb, and I knelt down before Baba's feet, I felt nothing. Uh, I felt I was a blank, in fact. But then I felt a great relief that Baba's suffering was over, and I was really overjoyed to have uh, this, this suffering over for Baba, and I felt very happy about that. Um... But then, then I sort of moved into another phase. It, it all happened, I cannot say the time length, but it happened in, a sequen- in that sequence. And then I became aware of Baba and myself in such close proximity that there was no distinction uh, of whether he was in the tomb or, uh, or where he was. It was uh, such a close feeling that Baba took me up into him it, like an embrace, uh, such a strong uh, emerging into Baba. 
uh, beyond emotion of any kind and far beyond any description of the mind. To relate it to the mind is a, is a terrible distortion because it was so deep into Baba's being that I, I have no idea how far, but I know it was far reaching, as far reaching as could possibly be. And so many times when we were with Baba, we felt that his great love, but many times we felt there was a gap, not complete. You know, you, you wanted to be closer to Baba, but you just couldn't. Well, in this moment, however long it lasted, it seemed an, an eternity, the gap didn't exist. It, it was just a complete uh, feeling of being so close. It was a feeling of being so close to Baba that the gap didn't exist at all. In fact, one didn't even know uh, of anything, of anything at all. I was completely almost blinded. I didn't see anything. It was in the formlessness, uh, Baba in the formless. And I saw beyond, just, just beyond any kind of form or any kind of expression. And it was so beyond myself, my ordinary self, but and yet it was my true self. It was beyond all expression, and and uh, and yet I was living it vitally and alive. There was no question about it. This was Baba as I really wanted to know him, and I wanted to to bring this Baba into my life for always. And this is the way it should be for always for all of us to to know Baba without any gap. And to experience this fullness and completeness of being with him, this intimateness of being one with him. Well, this is something that he gave you of himself. He gave it to me. I didn't make any effort. I didn't expect it. I didn't know as what was happening. He just came and embraced you. He just embraced me. This, this made you merge with him. So. Yes, it was a very beautiful thing. I think it's especially important to know at this time that these things can actually happen and that they are meant to happen. That through thinking of Baba as much as possible and loving him, that uh, it does become possible to live at a freer level, a level of love and beauty and nearness to him uh, where ordinary things do not affect us, where we experience the, the joy of Baba's presence nearly all the time. I, I was reminded of the last message that Baba gave uh, through a cable before his demise uh, to us. Uh, and the one that it was for me was uh, hold on to my day man. And during that time, I, I uh, was about to begin a uh, a travail that, uh, that I never had before, and Baba knew it, and so he cautioned me to hold on through thick and thin, and those posters of Baba Daman are very precious to me because it's a daily reminder that we must hold on to his Daman above everything, also, because he said that uh, time will come when uh, it will be hard to hold on to his day man, and uh, well, I try to remember that. As do we all, and it becomes a joy to hold on to Baba's Daman, because it is a real thing. It is the reality. Mm -hmm. Yes, we feel that holding on to Baba's Daman, or the hem of his garment, is an act of faith on our part, an act of daring, too, because through thick and thin, whether we understand it, what's going on, what the world has to offer, we still hold on to Baba's Daman. We trust him completely, because he is the doorway to the infinite.